Um, I'm Jan Holeshovsky. Uh, I'm so excited that I'm here at the Kotlin conference and I can present you about uh, what I've done uh, to port uh, Big Decimal uh, to, uh, to uh, Kotlin multi-platform. So first of all, like why we di did we do that? I work for Crossoid, uh, which is a company that focuses on uh, creating cross-platform Android-like uh, API. Uh, that means that our focus is that uh, when you have your Android app, which is quite an old app, like before Compose, uh, that you are still able to bring it to the iOS platform quite easily. Uh, we do it so that like, you continue your development for the Android, but you do it in the common main. Uh, but then like, we provide the activities, fragments, XML layouts, and all these things uh, on iOS. So like, we parse the XML layouts, create, uh, create from that the, the widgets and things that, like that. Happy to talk to you about that uh, later a bit, if you are interested. But like, our use case here was hyper scientific calculator. Um, which is using uh, the Crossoid. It has like 40 million downloads on Google Play, 1 million download on, uh, on Apple App Store these days. And for that, we needed Big Decimal. So what is this uh, Big Decimal? So it's a Java package that allows you to have numbers that are like arbitrarily big. So uh, like if you want to have like 100 decimal places, like Big Decimal is what you want to use. The Big Decimal itself consists exactly like from some kind of like large integer and the scale that tells you like where exactly is the decimal point in there. Uh, so it is like unscaled value um, 10 uh, to minus scale. Uh, it is used in many purposes, uh, like the monetary calculations. I've been talking here to some people from banks. They said, oh, OK, we know the big decimal. We know what is that. Uh, there are scientific calculations and uh, our use case was the arbitrary precision in the hyper scientific calculator. So, what I had to do to create this library. So, first step was decided what to do. Um, there are some existing implementation of the big decimal that are possible to use for multi-platform project. Unfortunately, like that wouldn't be compatible with our approach that like you have the API, you continue to using the API and just you know use that on iOS. So so this is not what we chose to use. Also like there would be possible to do some expects and uh, actuals uh, for iOS using the NS uh, decimal number which is part of the uh, iOS API but like didn't it, that didn't fit us because it didn't have the arbitrary precision. It had only like 38 digit, digits. So uh, the last like, kind of obvious choice before like, we could decide to, oh, we will just write it from scratch, was porting it from uh, the Android open source project. So that's what we done. Uh, then the second step was actually understanding like, what, what we are doing. So I read the code there. There was thin uh, Java layer in there. And all the heavy lifting was done by OpenSSL, so, which actually makes sense because like when you when you are counting with uh, big prime numbers you need some some good computation engine so they have it there um so so i've uh, yeah just just took it and uh, and see like what can i do with that so then i've created the multi platform library uh, from the template like easy stuff like just click it in android studio it does it for you you try to compile it okay now let's put the code uh, from the android open source project there and start converting it to Kotlin. So, yeah, I took the code, put it there. What is beautiful about this is that uh, like, I was able to do it very iteratively. So I've chosen one file, uh, I've uh, used the conversion tool to convert it to Kotlin, uh, and, and see like, what, what errors were there. Luckily, nothing that demanding was there, like some, some of the like, exceptions. I had to choose the Kotlin variant instead of that. Then there were some, some APIs that are available in the Java, not available in the, uh, in the Kotlin like in this way. So you had to, had to change it so that it is more Kotlin-y. Um, then a few things about casting uh, weren't right, uh, so had to had to change these. Sometimes there were more advanced like if conditions, and in that case, like it could have been like more demanding to change. But like 
nothing, nothing, uh, nothing hard. That was the easy part. Um, converting um, was uh, done by file by file. Like the batch conversion didn't work for me that well, and also like it was much easier to keep it buildable because. Kotlin and Java can coexist just nicely. You can have part of the project in Java, part of the Kotlin, a part of that in Kotlin, and, and it just continues working, building, whatever. Now, this was the hard part. Uh, so, to be able uh, to use the uh, boring SSL here, I had to do the center of binding. Uh, because for the JVM, it was, uh, it was done as, uh, uh, as Java native interface kind of thing. Uh, so I followed uh, the documentation that is like the official one. Uh, I've taken the, uh, the Java native interface C++ from the Android open source project. Like here is the, if, if I'm doing this right. Yeah, so, so here is the, like what, what it looked like before. This is like what, what I had to do in Kotlin. Lots of casting because like the, you, you are dealing with pointers. You cannot have it like pointers. You have to have uh, longs. Like when you when you do that, so some a bit of casting, but like nothing nothing that hard in the end because like it was mostly calling into into the boring SSL in the end. So uh, so so that was that was good. Um, in terms of, uh, I've been to uh, to a presentation yesterday where Solomon Brace uh, presented uh, like his stuff about C interoperability. Uh, I've been using his his post here uh, to achieve this uh, as an additional source of inf information. It rocks. Uh, so so like if you ever need to do anything like this, uh, just just consult this. It's it's awesome. Um, then things you will need to to use. Uh, so one of them is memscoped. Uh, so that is like if you want to have a block. Uh, where you uh, want to allocate some memory, you have to ha do it memscoped. So that like inside memscoped, you can create something that like allocates memory, you can then pass it uh, to, to C so that it does the work with that, fills it with, with values or whatever, and then returns it back. Then of course, if memscoped uh, ends, like it's just, it is destroyed and uh, you cannot use it anymore. So that is one thing that we'll, you will probably need to learn like if you, if you want to do anything like this. Uh, and uspint is another thing that was uh, like crucial for the work here. Uh, in this case, like it is, if you have an array, uh, you are able to provide a pointer to this array uh, again to to, the, to some C call. So so this again is a Kotlin feature uh, that was crucial uh, for for this making it to work. Okay, so once it was done and uh, and kind of worked. Um, uh, the debugging started. Luckily, uh, there were not uh, some kind of like miscomputations. Like um, I've done some some mistake in in handling of uh, plus and minus at some stage, so so it was swapped, but like it was easy to fix. But other than that, like there were some crashes um, here and there. It was new for me, so nothing nothing <laughs> surprising. But the biggest problem was this uh, invalid mutability exception. Uh, I don't know. Have you anybody of you seen that? Ah, okay. <laughs> One of you was the, the poor and unlucky as me. So uh, luckily, this is all gone uh, since uh, Kotlin 1720. Huge thanks uh, to Kotlin developers that that, that have uh, like provided the new memory manager, and uh, and like you do not have to care because like debugging that was like you had to um, like instrument your code, that it was freezing deliberately something, that it was crashing on some other completely unrelated place, and well, just completely hell. And the last step here was creating binary packages. For about a year, I've put it uh, only on GitHub uh, with uh, quite a lot of documentation, like how to achieve that, what to do. Um, but still, like people uh, were a bit unhappy about this, so um, for this talk, I've created the binary packages. Um, I have read that like it is not that easy to put it to Maven Central, that there are many steps. To, so I've tried the GitHub packages. Uh, there's one uh, like inconvenient 
thing there that like you have to uh, generate a token so that you are able to actually download the packages but like it is all described in the readme and in the end like if you uh, if you follow that uh, like you should be able in your multi platform project to do just this implementation for simulator or uh, the actual arm device and uh, you will be done with that for Java, it is just no work because uh, because like it is part of that, like it will just compile. But for the iOS, you will do this, and as long as you have your code that uses the big decimal in the common main, it will just work for you. And so, we are here to conclusions. So I've learned some lessons. So first of all, Kotlin rocks, and it is that my experience was like I didn't know when I started like what I need to do, how I need to do that. So I just thought, okay, well, maybe it's possible, maybe not. I've searched, sometimes more, sometimes it's less. But like in the end, like whatever I could imagine was possible. So so I'm extremely happy about that. Um, I've learned a lot about the interoperability with C. Um, if you are in a position that you need to do something like that, um, this is quite easy example, like how to how to see like what's happening, how how it is happening, what to do. So so maybe it will be an inspiration for you as well, because like I've left there uh, the J, uh, JNI version as well, uh, because I've been using that for the testing uh, of the quality of the conversion. Uh, so it is still possible to to build the JNI, uh, Java version of of the library uh, in in there. Um, so maybe it could be an inspiration. And uh, that the freezing here uh, is a good riddance. I'm, I'm so glad that it is gone. So some resources. Uh, so the Kotlin uh, native big decimal itself available under Apache license v2 because I've converted from IOCP. So the same license there. Uh, there's an example project showing how to integrate it uh, with uh, like very small example. Like the, it just shows like I don't know some computation that that will result into something. And yes, Crossoid, uh, I've talked about this just slightly. Would be excited to talk about this a bit more, maybe next time. So that's me. Thank you so much. And we still have three minutes for questions. So thank you. <laughs>